Ah, yes, Commander Farsight. I like this effect. I feel like there should be some cracking or whatever, but um, yeah. So, besides being a pain to put together, it also turned out to be a fairly long paint job. Um, I surfaced him with the uh, pure red from Vallejo, but I guess Mephiston red or whatever would do the same. And uh, then I did Asian gray for the stone he's standing on. That was like my, my first thing. Uh, as you might have spotted, I did some Zenithal with a lighter red, just for the hell of it. Also, I did it on my Eldar army and that looked fairly good, so yeah, but why not? So this is going to be a longer video than what I normally do. Uh, and that's simply because this is a model that I felt um, deserved a little bit more attention than, uh, than what I normally care to put into these models. Uh, I am the bad mini painter after all uh, and uh, you don't uh, you don't stay bad if you actually put an effort in that's that's the issue so I generally just went around with the corn red next uh, to do his uh, his lines his his markings and to add some variations basically I'm kind of just following the box art but don't tell anyone um, but it, it looked really good and uh, I actually tried a little bit of freehanding and that ended up quite well as well. Well as well. That's that's a bad sentence. And but Commander Farside is a pretty cool model. He was kind of a pain uh, to like, uh, put together, but, but I really like this model. Uh, I like the scenic base and everything. It's, uh, it's kind of cool. So I wanted to put in some effort. Uh, I decided to go over everything with uh, some red tone from from the army painter it, it it has started to become my one of my favorite washes i'm sorry about the focus I, I i'm still struggling figuring out how camera works because that's that's difficult apparently but generally i just go into all the lines with the with this one and try to fill it out a bit to add some depth and uh, separation. On some of these I will go back later and uh, and uh, do some black panel lining. So graphite from um, Skull 75 is a really high pigmented light grey uh, and it's pretty good for dry brushing. Uh, I decide to lay it on thick. I do that mm, often when I dry brush. Um, Sometimes uh, dry brushing is more a question about doing edge highlighting, and in that case, I will uh, I will go light uh, and have very little paint on on my brush. But uh, for something like this, where I basically want to color in most of the stone or the rock, and belts are gold, I'm trying that out for the joints. I guess it's a joint. Yeah. I've been trying different colors and uh, from I uh, I feel like Balthazar gold is is more vibrant than my other attempts and uh, it it does it it works well with the with the red uh, base color thing I guess it will work just as well with the white but still next I decided to use gray here for some uh, thick edge highlighting on the stone. I'm kind of a little all over the place. Uh, I should probably have done the base first and then moved on, or done the model and then done the base. I guess that's actually no base first because it's more difficult to correct errors on a model than a base, I guess. But some edge highlighting for, for the rock. Just, yeah. Not being particularly uh, careful with what I'm actually hitting, but you know, aiming for the edges. Then lead belcher for the sword, and that's actually the only thing I decided to go metal, ah, going metal, um, on on him. Uh, again, I'm I'm pretty faith, uh, faithful to the box art, and that may be because I'm just unimaginative. That's that's definitely a possibility. And uh, Corax white for uh, 
the white parts of his, his shield um, is kind of a grayish white uh, on the box art so I thought that was perfect and I decided to give his helmet that as well and then later highlight it um, I ended up looking okay that's actually the theme of this uh, this paint job is everything ended up looking kind of okay which is new for me then Wraith Bone for the uh, I don't know, pieces of fabric hanging off his, uh, his leg and, uh, and the sword. I'm later going to add some contrast to this, so Wraith Bone seems to uh, make sense. And it's, it's kind of a soft, actually uh, white as well. Oh, good for fabric. And the same thing for the fabric hanging off his, um, his leg, for some reason. I think that when Game Workshop um, designs models, it's, it's, it's partly to pay, uh, piss painters off and uh, partly to add awesome details. Then it's a Bantam Black time, and I'm really sick of painting with a Bantam Black. Not as sick as I am. Uh, of painting with uh, Horus Green, but uh, a Horus Sun, Sons of Horus, that's the name of it. But I just generally go all over the bottle and add black where black should be, and that is uh, all the vents or whatever that is, and uh, uh, his chest emblem, uh, his legs, uh, parts of his weapon, as I remember. Careful now, I might be lying. Nope, no, I'm not lying. Well, not about this. I started out being super careful uh, with this and then I figured that that wouldn't pay off at all. And I had a hard time figuring out what was supposed to be red and what was supposed to be uh, black on the legs, but uh, I think the end result was uh, okay. And I actually managed to thin my black too much, so I had to give it two coats. Two coats. Uh, and then some light grey wash from uh, Vallejo. Um, I really like Vallejo's uh, washes. And I just put it into the, the lines on, uh, on his helmet. And that was honestly the only thing I used it for. And then the black wash from uh, Vallejo. Uh, for the places where I wanted uh, the line separation to be uh, more visible than what the red tone offered. And I'm simply using a super thin brush, focus, thank you, super thin uh, bristle, bristled uh, brush, adding the wash to it and just letting it seep into, uh, into the channels that is on, on this model. And it gives a pretty clean result. And if it doesn't, and you're quick, you can just wipe it off with your finger. With no need to go in and uh, repair it violently with uh, red colors. That's also the problem with the central highlighting thing. I wanted that to um, stay there. So that made it hard to go in and repair something. Because you have a gradient. So if I painted on it, it was hard to recreate that gradient. Yeah, that makes sense. And in order to avoid consistency, let's go back to the base. Uh, I use uh, Dryad Bark to uh, paint uh, the stems on the flower, tree, bush kind of things. I, I don't know what that is. I, I honestly don't. But a base color of a uh, dryad bark. Which is uh, intended for bark. So, perfect.
den som non all n n that name uh, shading for the sword um, I tried to put on a fairly thin layer just to add a little bit of of um, different um, shading well it's a shader so to add shading it's, it's fairly ideal and also it will seep into the crevices and uh, give it some depth uh, the scratches become more visible on the sword and, and stuff like that and as I said a white scarf for highlighting god damn I need to work on my camera anywho I'm sorry for that but uh, highlighting the helmet with the white scarf instead of horrible paint but whatever I really need to work on my uh, like focus area I'm pretty ADHD with uh, where I decide to paint. So I'll do a little base, then I go up and do that, and then I'll do something with the sword. And uh. I'm talking about the base. Time for some shading, and I decided to go with some Corellia uh, green shade for uh, for all the cracks to make it a little mossy, mildewy. And then belt and green on top of that more generously, a little too generously, but uh, again to to make it look a little bit uh, alive and natural, like uh, a little more lush. I think lush is the right word. Yes, that's again good camera work. Here's my hand. I am getting better at it. It's it's all about angles and uh, well, a lot of stuff is. So But that's basically me being done with the rock. Uh, still missing some details on the on, on the flower things so let's do that uh, morphine brown dry brush um, well not really dry brushing more smearing uh, I use a, a lot of paint on my brush um, generally just talked about that uh, because the, the only places I don't want morphine brown is in the deep crevices and where a shadow would naturally fall, I guess. So, yeah, liberal, generously smearing it on. Not slap chopping, but slapping. Why does that put all that slap chop thing? I, I think I'm going to do a video about that. It seems like everyone is, so I, I, I should probably do that as well, right? I want to be taken serious there. So now the trees looks uh, a lot more alive and less dead. So I decided to do a, a scrack brown for um, highlighting. So it has a bunch of knobs and little things pointing out, and I decided to highlight those with the uh, yeah scrack brown. It, it, this is way more diesel work than I would normally bother to do, but hey, there we go. And uh, with that being done, ink by darkness for highlighting all the black parts. Just because they are like very black and it, it's it's kind of boring to look at, so I decided to highlight it with a with a lighter uh, dark uh, well with a really really dark green I think, but. Um, Just to make sure that everything didn't uh, seem too flat. Uh, I think flat is the right word. Everything seemed kind of flat. And I went all over, like all the black parts on it, of him. Got a. Oh, and now the model is actually shattering what I'm doing. It. Everything is going great. Some host silver for the sword, and that was also where, uh, when I realized that uh, I actually had some pretty bad pooling, 
untalked or sort, or I don't say the blade, but and I really like using Stormhost Silver just for highlighting. Um, it's excellent at that when you use uh, Lead Belcher. It's funny because it doesn't seem like it, it makes a big difference, but when you do a before and after, after you have done it, you're kind of like, oh yeah. Uh, uh, but if you do a before and after, it's a huge difference. So it's funny like that. And Auric Armor Gold to highlight uh, the joints. Other old things. What it's called. But I decided to highlight with Auric uh, Armor Gold, something I I started using when I thought I was going to be the master of everything playing Custodes. And a little dab of uh, Lothurn, Lothurn Blue on his arm thingamabob. I think that is the official term for it, like technically it's a thingamabob. A lot of things is. And the uh, Plasmatic Bolt is a speed paint uh, from uh, the Army Painter. Uh, and I quite like the speed paints. I know there was a problem with the speed paints reactivating themselves or reactivating each other, uh, but I haven't really had any issues, uh, even though it's a version 1 that I'm uh, using here. But I think it, it adds a, a decent glowing effect to the sword. Then a little bit of blue horror, just highlighting uh, the thing of above. And with uh, my own position, I just decided to stab the middle. And white sand from scale 75 is a uh, off white, highly pigmented. I really recommend um, scale 75 if you like paints with really really high pigmentation. Uh, their basic uh, paint series, even the light yellows, um, are quite awesome. Um, the problem is that they can get quite clumpy uh, or gunky. Um, but it's in dripper bottles, so that's good. Just have a needle by hand. Uh, But basically, this step consists of, uh, consists of uh, me just stabbing all the flowers, things. So, some pallet bone for the fabric to make it look a little... Uh, just to dirty it up a bit, I guess. What's the whole point of this uh, exercise? And uh, it, it had a like the desired effect. Just have to be careful with pooling, also with speed paints. So what I do normally is I just use the brush to collect whatever I have when I have a little bit too much, and then yeah, you can wipe it off or use it on the other side. It's See a lot yellow again from the army painter for the flowers. Uh, I try to stay like center of the flower, but not care too much if I hit other parts of the flower. And uh, the end result was actually kind of uh, decent. I mean, not brilliant, but but decent. So my idea is that the flower would be. Uh, Yellow in the middle, and then uh, the longer you came out of on the on the leaves, is that the name? Flower leaf doesn't sound right. Um, it would peel out. And then, finally, my uh, absolute last step was to go over the entire thing with uh, with uh, Wild Rider Red, uh, just doing highlights. And for some reason, half of my footage corrupted, but I went through the entire bloody thing. Uh, and it, it, it took quite a bit of time. But uh, the end result was kind of nice. And here we go, here he is, all done. I added sand and uh, some... Uh, some... Uh, uh, tough tops, 
uh, to the base and uh, when it all came together like this, it's, like, yeah, it's a decent paint job. I mean, definitely not brilliant, but uh, I have done a lot worse, which isn't really saying much. But I was actually kind of proud of this one. It ended up pretty much how I wanted it. And uh, that's rare for me in life. Anywho, this was a really long video. Thank you so much for watching. If you uh, enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe and uh, seek a mental health specialist. Until the next one, bye.